Again, God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. May your hearts be fruitful and feeding to follow our Lord Jesus Christ. The path of companionship and mission will lead us through the journey of the joy and happiness in Jesus Christ. Amen. The mission of Christ is bestowed to those who love Jesus and be loved by Jesus Christ our Lord. Our mission is the most adored interest of God, to pour out everything to attend it and feed the sheep of Jesus as his church, as his body. It is a mission entrusted to all disciples, not just pastors, all disciples who are called and sent by the love, love of God. To love Jesus solely and wholly, we walk the path as we humbly confess our love to Jesus. And on this path, we must, we must die every day. We must die every day. Where our thoughts, my agenda, my greed, my sin, my philosophy, and self-righteousness must, must perish and be buried. Through this path, we discover that we are renewed in our daily death. Even though we always confess, I die every day, at the time you understand, we are refreshed, renewed every day. It is a very mysterious phenomenon, but it is true. Because we know that none of this is possible with our thought, our strength. We walk the path by binding ourselves to love of God. Therefore, we always pray before God like this. Father, please bind me by your love. We want to be bound by God's love, Jesus' love. God may hold us in his love and carry us through. And only then we realize that the path we walk to die is the path that glorifies God the Father. And where even our last breath becomes a praise. We praise his glory and Becoming to the praise of his glory, it will be our journey's conclusion and our eternity. Our worship of God's glory will become our story and eternity will be our narrative. That is, God has planned for our life journey. This is the rebirth that Jesus spoke into Peter's story. When Peter humbly replied, Jesus, you know that I love you, Lord. At the time, when Je uh, actually, when Jesus asked, do you love me, Simon, son of John? At the time, the Lord, the Lord P comm commissioned Peter to feed my lambs, shepherd my sheep, and feed my sheep. And Jesus revealed to Peter what kind of death awaits him to glorify God. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you tied your clothes around you and went wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will tie you up and bring you where you don't want to go. And then Jesus commanded follow me. So we can realize we have to be tied by Jesus only. And as he followed Jesus, when Peter followed Jesus, he noticed that beloved disciple was by his side. So Peter asked Jesus, Lord, what about this man? He was curious about what kind of death awaited him because he had heard about his death. But Jesus replied, 
If it is my will that he remains until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Yes, that is today's scripture. Through today's scripture, we have to hear his message. This passage is a message about what manner of heart, what mindset, what kind of attitude, attitude we must take when we walk the path of our mission tied to the love of God. Actually, there are several mindsets and attitudes we, we must maintain when we seek and confess to die every day on the path of faith. Without them, you know what? We waver and stray from our path and lose our joy and happiness. When you follow Jesus' way, when you go the uh, way of Jesus' mission, mission calling, yes, it looks like it's a very hard, difficult way, suffering way. But if you see again in detail, there is joy. There is meaningfulness. There is happiness. Did you know that? You don't know that? If you walk the way of mission or if you follow Jesus Christ, you know what I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying. There is joy, meaningfulness, and Happiness when we follow Jesus' way for our mission calling. Amen. But sometimes we found that we, we, we find out ourselves, we, we, we find ourselves out that we have no joy. We have no happiness. Rather, we complain, grumble, like that. Why? Because we lose this mindset. Because we lose, we lost this attitude. So that when we follow Jesus' way for our mission calling, to accomplish our mission calling, because Jesus gives us that mission calling because he loves us and, and we love him, we have to know this mindset, attitude in our life journey. So, what stance and view must we uphold to follow Jesus through the path of our mission? That is the message we have to hear today and take in our heart. So first of all, you must install the mindset of companionship. Companionship. The path we walk we walk because we are called and sent by God actually, individually and personally. When God calls you, he calls you individually, each of you. He never calls you together. He calls you individually and personally. He saved you individually and personally. And also when God sent you in your reality, at the time you have to be sent by God individually. Absolutely yes. But you would understand immediately that this journey is not a lonely one. There is always another. Actually, they are comrades. They are companions who also follow Jesus as you do. Therefore, you must install the mindset of companionship, a communal comradeship. Let's just see the today's scripture, verse 20. Here's what it said. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. The one who also had leaned back against Jesus during the supper and, said, and had said, Lord, who is, the, is, who is it that is going to betray you? As Jesus told Peter the kind of death and would, uh, he would face to glorify God, he commanded Peter to follow me. And then Peter received his personal calling. Yes, Jesus called Peter individually. Is it right? But at the time, he, he noticed 
that the beloved disciple of Jesus accompanied as well. The beloved disciple was someone whom Jesus clearly adored as much as he could ask Jesus who is that is going to betray Jesus. Uh, of course, the of course, other disciples, did you, did you know, did you remember there are seven disciples? Yes, seven disciples were there. So, but other disciples were also following Jesus, but the Gospel of John only records this particular disciple. Uh, while, while this detail is about summarizing Peter's leadership and correcting misinformation about the beloved disciple as uh, the end of epilogue to the whole book, but it also reveals that every individual, like you and me, every individual is beloved and called by Jesus, right? Yes, Jesus called you, Jesus loves you individually. And then, because we are disciples who be loved by Jesus, we have to walk the path of our own mission. If you love and are loved by Christ as a beloved disciple, you must follow Jesus. You must follow Jesus. But for Peter's perspective, when we are on Peter's shoes, it was very important to say that the path of Jesus is not someone one walks alone. Through Jesus commanded this mission to Peter specifically and individually, Peter complied as an individual to follow Jesus. At the time, Peter also had to need, had to notice that the beloved disciple of Jesus also accompanied. He noticed that his journey had a companion. And this awareness is very important to all of us. The path of calling and mission was never, be, never to be walked alone. Jesus never sent a disciple on his own. Even when he see the Gospel of Mark, he, when he sent 12 disciples at the time, 12 were sent by pairs. And the same applied for the 70 disciples in the Luke. Yes, they were sent by, sent by pairs as well. So we must learn to walk together, together. Of course, we are saved. You are saved individually. But when you follow Jesus' way for the mission calling, you have to know you must walk together. Walking together can be troublesome because we are all very, very, very different. We are very different. After all, walking together may feel slower. In some cases, it's very faster to walk along. But Lord Jesus commanded us to walk together. For each of us as individuals were called to become one community, one body of Christ. We are all different, but remember, we are one body. Amen. Amen. That's why the Romans chapter 12, verse 5, and 1 Corinthians 12, 25 says like this. Romans 12, 5, so we, though many, yes, we are very many, very many, various characters, various backgrounds, various races, we are many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Yes, we are members of one another. And when you see the first Corinthians 12, 25, this makes for what? Harmony. Harmony among the members. 
so that all the members care for each other. Does it make sense? You know, in our body, we have lots of members. We have hands, we have eyes, we have mouth, but they care for each other. For what? To build up my body, to give us health body. Like that, church is one body, even though we are so different. And when you follow Jesus' way for your mission calling, you have to understand, you have to get the mindset of companionship. That is God's will. Just as different body parts support one another to maintain the healthy life, we must also come together and support one another as one body of Christ. We must walk together. Together. That is how to follow Jesus. That is, we, that is the mindset we have to get when you follow Jesus' way. At the time, one thing, actually one trouble we encountered. We encountered one trouble. There is one trouble encountered. That is actually comparison. Therefore, number two, when you follow Jesus for our mission calling, my brothers and sisters, please, please, please delete the comparative instincts. Comparative instincts. First thing we must delete from our perspective in our goal to unite together as one body is the comparative instinct. Comparative instincts like cancer. Cancer. It may start as small, but it will grow into something bigger, like superi su superiority complex or inferiority complex. Superiority complex and inferiority complex are two sides of coins. What? Arrogance. Arrogance. Do you like arrogance? I don't think so. We hate arrogance. Why? Because arrogance is essentially about leaving our position. We are creatures before God, but we always want to live from before God. That is the arrogance. That is the arrogance. So if you feel superior, superiority, superiority, so you think I'm superior to other people, actually you leave your position. I don't think so. Nobody can be superior to another people. Everybody is the same person. And the other and, 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 and the other side, inferiority. Inferiority is also arrogance. Why? How dare you feel inferior? To think you're inferior is actually to mock the masterpiece craftsmanship of God. As you know, we are masterpieces of God. Amen? Of course. So if you feel inferior to other people, it is actually mock of the masterpiece of God. So that is arrogant. That is arrogance. And such comparative instincts are like cancer that destroy our faith and our life journey. So let's just see the part, today's scripture, verse 21. When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Peter asked about the beloved, beloved disciple Actually, who is who, who 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 wrote this book? John. I don't think Peter asked Jesus about the beloved disciples of faith out of jealousy or inferiority. Peter at that moment had no time, no room for such a distraction. He was probably just curious, curiosity. But what's important here is how Jesus didn't even allow such a small curiosity. You know why? Actually, comparative instincts always creeps in my mind. Creeps. 
creeps in my mind. Well, you, you're just curious. You are just curious how beloved disciple lives nowadays. When you see somebody, wow, God loves him. Yes, I bet God loves him. And then you are just curious how he or she lives in his or her reality. So before seeing his house, my house is a very good house. But when you visit his house because you are very curious and his house is a very awesome big house, and then you feel inferiority. Or his house is a very small one, and my house is bigger than his house. Oh, I thought he's beloved one, but my house is bigger than him. Oh my, I am better than him. That is superior, superiority complex. Like that, even through curiosity, the comparative instinct creeps in my mind. That's why Jesus cut Peter's curiosity. He said, as you know, if I want him to live until I return, what is that to you? Jesus immediately cut Peter from comparing himself to another by saying like this. We walk the path of faith together as we are called. We are called differently. No one is more or less important because the body may have many parts, many members, but it's still one body. The eye cannot, cannot tell a hand, cannot tell a hand that it's less important, and the head cannot condemn a foot. Sometimes, sometimes, a part that seems weaker than other parts can be more useful than the rest. Comparative instincts cannot be allowed in Jesus Christ. It poisons us with superior, superiority or inferiority complex. You will understand how much serious it damage as you read Jesus' parable. When you read Luke chapter 18, Jesus spoke this parable to the scornful and self-righteous people. A Pharisee and a tax collector came to temple to pray. At that time, Pharisee, Pharisee prayed with comparative instincts. He prayed before God like this. I'm not like other people, or sinners or, and wrongdoers. I'm so grateful that I'm not like this tax collector. Even his thanksgiving, as you know, thanksgiving is a very precious one, but his thanksgiving was about comparing himself to another. But the tax collector's prayer compared himself to no one. He didn't say, he didn't say, I am worse than everyone. I'm sinned more than anyone. He didn't say it like that. He just Reflect himself before God. He dared not look up towards the heaven. He simply smacked his chest and cried, God, have mercy on me. Why? There's no comparison. I am a sinner. What is the result? As you know, the Lord Jesus deemed tax collector as the righteous. What of a Pharisee? He was not righteous. Superiority, weaved by comparative instinct, will be our ruin if not destroyed. You must destroy superiority complex. You must destroy comparative instinct. At the time you can follow Jesus, his way. The same applies for the parable of talent. I think you, under, you, you, you remember that parable. The foolish servants of one talent buried in ground for he failed to understand his master. In his ignorance, because he could not understand master, 
He probably compared himself to other servants of five and two talents, wondering how he deserves less. You know what? Actually, one talent is still a lot of money. When he, actually, talent is not coin. It is kind of the weight, weight, the, 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 the measure of weight. The one talent, if we, uh, if we apply to the silver, it is 6,000 drachma. What is drachma in English? What is drachma in English? Drachma, drachma is English? <laughs> anyway, one drachma is, is, is wage of uh, the labor, a day, the daily wage of uh, adult man at the time. So 60,000 drachma. Drachma is actually takes a thousand days of wage of the labor. You know what I'm saying? So one talent is not small one, but because he didn't understand the master, he just compared himself to other servants. Wow, he got five talents. He, he received two talents, but me? I just have one talent. It's unfair. He thought like that. So what is the result? He was expelled before the master. But when you read that scripture, that parable, actually, you know what? The servant of five talent earned another five and uh, bring ten, brought ten. And the servant of two talent earned another two and brought four. Think about that. Ten and four is a large difference. Uh, one, essential, one essentially has less than half of another, the other. But the master Lord commanded both equally. Both were commanded by exact same words. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. When you read that parable, there is no difference, no difference between receiving five or two talents. What is important is to be loyal to the talents and the roles bestowed upon us. You don't need to have the comparison mind. Comparative instinct, you have to destroy. Just focus on what you have to do. Your roles, your gifts, God bestowed you. Let's see the Romans 12, 6. We have different gifts based on the grace that was given to us. Remember, did you see that? We have different gifts. Not same gift. Different gifts based on the same grace that was given to us. So if your gift is prophecy, use your gift in proportion to your faith. If your gift is serving, devote yourself to serving others. If it is teaching, devote yourself to teaching others. If it is encouraging, devote yourself to encouraging others. If it is sharing, sharing generously. If it is leading, lead enthusiastically. If it is helping, help cheerfully. Did you see that? This is the way, this is the way we have to walk. We walk and work together according to the role and gift bestowed to us by the head, Jesus Christ. We all have our roles not same. So our focus must be on following Jesus, our head. Your role may feel small and unimportant to your human eyes, but even so, you and I must follow Jesus as we engage in the mission. 
Therefore, number three, when we follow Jesus' way for our mission calling, we must engage in the mission. We have to this mindset in our heart. The way of Christ is the path of companionship. And comparative instinct will poison us with superiority or inferiority complex. Wasting our time, precious time God has saved. We must only follow Jesus. Engage in the mission. Engagement is a strong and consistent focus. It's like to immerse yourself in the flow. Have you ever been deeply immersed in a certain task that you forget the passing of time? Yes, that is engagement. Engagement. To immerse yourself in the flow. When you are focused, you don't compare yourself to someone else. And you feel deep and powerful joy. That's why Jesus replied to Peter like this. So let's just see again verse 22. Jesus said to Peter, if, I, if it is my will that he remains until I come, what is that to you? In other words, it's not your business. It's not your business. It's not your business. What is that to you? And he said, you follow me. Jesus' reply was very firm and straightforward. His emphasis was on his command, you follow me here. Actually, the word you, you. The you is a very emphasized and stressed phrase. Like English, like in English, you know, the, when you say, follow me, what does it mean? You follow me, right? But if you want to emphasize that, you follow me like that. In Greek, it's, it, it's more. Actually, in Greek word, there is a personal in the verb, in the verb. So when you see just a verb, you understand is, uh, uh, it is what say to someone. Who, who say to, who say to. When you see the verb, you understand it is for uh, I or you or he, she or they. You understand that? So this you, the word you in Greek is a very emphasized word. So Jesus emphasized like that. Hey, it's not your business. It's not your business. You just have in mind the companionship with others. You don't need to have the comparative instinct. You don't have to just curiosity. What is that to you? It's not your business. You just follow me. Yes. Jesus just cut off Peter's question like that. Why? Because of that curiosity always makes us have comparative instinct. And comparative instinct always destroys our faith and our life. We cannot follow Jesus with joyfulness and happiness, even though we are bound by his love. Actually, Apostle Paul shows us what, is it, what it is. Look at Acts 20, 24. But I do not consider my life worth anything to myself. Yeah, he don't care about his life. He didn't care his life. So that I may finish my task and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus. Yes, same to us. Paul also had received God's calling, his ministry, task. We have received God's task, his ministry, because we are loved by God and we love Jesus. That is what is that? It is to testify the good news of God's grace. Yes, that's what we have to do. That's what we have to focus on. We have to testify the good news of God's grace in our reality. Because we love Jesus, we are loved by Jesus our Lord. So immerse yourself into the flow like that. The path of faith is ours to walk 
and there is no comparison. How can a person be so engaged in journey that he wouldn't even lay down his life? Because his focus was on Jesus. Jesus. Paul was immersed in Christ's grace. That's why he could engage himself, his role, and ministry. And in doing so, he also saw that the Lord God prepared righteous crown for all those who adore the presence of Jesus as well as for himself. God opened his eyes to see the righteous crown in eternity. There, 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 and then there is joy and happiness in his journey because he could see what God prepared for his life. When can we have that? Yes, when we emerge ourselves in the mission calling from God. So engage yourself in the path, your mission, your calling. You don't need to have a comparative instinct anymore. No, you, you don't need to do that. Just focus, immerse yourself in the path, your mission, calling, wherever and whenever. There, you will find happiness and delight in the name of Jesus Christ. The more you engage in following Jesus to your mission, the more you see. You will witness, you will witness the eternal days prepared ahead, and your steps will become stronger in your journey of faith. My friends, you know what? Peter, Paul, beloved disciple John, and all of us really, really are tiny and momentary speckles. We trip and fall into despair because things don't go our way or our greed, even though we have accepted Jesus and became his disciples. But no matter how lost we are, the Lord Jesus finds us and reveals his love in our reality. He calls us to confess our broken love and receive our confession as loyalty. And he invites us to his mission and path. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, engage in it. Immerse in it. Forget about feeling better or worse by comparing yourself to someone else. That's useless. Instead, join together, united, and walk the path together. The astounding, wonderful glory will be unveiled to us when the era of eternity opens upon us. Let us pray. Do you have any Father God? Even though we are bound by your love, we always complain, grumble when you follow Jesus' way. Because we always compare ourselves to someone else. Or sometimes we are arrogant because we think we are superior to another people. That's why even though we follow your way, we have no joy, we have no meaningful, we have no happiness. Dear Father God, we are so thankful because you make us understand the reason. Father, that's why we have decided to delete the comparative instinct while we are following Jesus' way for our mission calling. Father, make us immerse ourselves into the flow, that mission calling. Father, Make us walk together. Make us understand we are not alone 
and you has given us our companion, our friends, brothers, and sisters. And make us understand that they are not people we have to compare. Rather, they are people who are walking together. Please make us understand. And please give us strength to take this mindset in our heart. Have this attitude in our reality. We need it, Father God. Please give us this mindset in our heart. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.